2K guys. Okay, I I I feel as if we're we're 15 minutes into the show and we we haven't brought up the player of the game. We're gonna go with Chris House Porzingis, right? I mean, this guy who's missed five months of action comes in all of a sudden out of nowhere. First Shams bomb of the season, it feels as if uh, since uh, Woe's retired. Comes in this morning and drops a, a, a early Christmas miracle for the Boston Celtics. Chris Hapsporzingis in his return tonight, 16 points, uh, six rebounds, two assists, three stocks. Uh, he was a plus three tonight, 50% shooting from the field in nearly 23 minutes. Nearly 23 minutes. Now, this was, I, I, I wasn't expecting, uh, I wasn't really expecting uh, Chris Hapsporzingis to play upwards of, of 20 plus minutes, but we did see that tonight and he looked like he didn't skip a beat. Guys, listen, it is holiday season. Christmas is right around the corner. What better way than to gift your friends and family Celtics tickets? Celtics are rocking and rolling right now. Pretty cool to catch these guys live. You can co- use code Celtics Weekly at checkout for $20 off your first purchase. Of course, that is Celtics Weekly for $20 off your first purchase. Franco, we'll start with you. Chris Saps Porzingis. I mean, this is a guy. As I mentioned, five months off. Celtics coming off an NBA championship, probably targeting around a December, January return. We heard at media day that Porzingis may be ahead of schedule. I don't know if we thought that he was this ahead of schedule. We are still in November, Franco, and he comes out tonight, and he looks like he had missed absolutely no time he shot one for six from distance go back and watch the film a lot of wide open threes playing drop coverage can't play drop coverage uh against Chris Stapps Porzingis he will make you pay but it looks like he didn't skip a beat Franco yeah I thought he was still frozen in the ice like he was Captain America I thought that we weren't going to be seeing him until around the Christmas time I thought we were going to keep him in the bubble wrap until the NBA Cup time and even today I thought we were going to slowly work him in. Hell, I thought we weren't even going to see more than 15 minutes from him. But we saw almost, dare to say, knock on wood, a fully healthy Chris Stapp Porzingis out on the court. And I know Joe and Brad wouldn't have put him out on the court if he wasn't anything else. I think Mm. that what it's going to bring to this team is a lot of comfort. And you're going to see his return affect the players around him more than it affects him. I think Mm -hmm. that you're going to see Al Horford beginning to get the rest, Tillman being able to play more of his position and role. And I also think that Cornette and Cato will also benefit from him coming back despite them losing minutes. I think they're going to be able to be diluted into a role that they feel more comfortable doing. I think Cato is still a developing player. I Mm -hmm. think that his potential is through the roof i think if he's properly worked on but it just adds another dimension to the celtics roster that was missing during the first quarter of the season so far and it's just good to have him back i having that athleticism on the defensive end being able to get to those shots and chase them down and not being a foul in the paint has been phenomenal to watch from him and I'm just looking forward to seeing how they continue to manage him. And if he's off the leash, good luck for the rest of the NBA for the rest of the season. Absolutely. Yeah, Kristaps Porzingis, I, of course, we're always going to say this anytime a player comes back and we win by 32. But this was the perfect opportunity to bring him back in. I know we think a little, eh, maybe a little early in November, but we, of course, aren't Chris Topps Porzingis. We aren't the medical team. They initially give us a timeline of return, oh, late December, maybe early January. But that was months ago, months ago. And if he's progressing along and feels well, and, of course, we saw him out there for, feels like a month plus, he was really practicing very, very hard, whether it was in practice or before games. A lot of people actually saw him at the arena practicing before games. But tonight, the Clippers, they didn't really have the personnel to go up against Kristaps Porzingis. And this was a good night to – it's never a good night to have players out, but if we're going to have Horford and Cornette sit because of injuries or rest or whatever it is, this was the night to do it because the Clippers, they don't really have any big guys. They were missing Mo Bamba tonight, and their one big guy on the roster right now who actually played was Zubach. And, of course, he had himself quite a night and 
led the scoring for the Clippers, or I, I believe he led the way for the Clippers about. 23 and but, 10, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the rest of the roster, if you look at their bench, there really isn't a big guy coming off the bench. There's no other big guy in the starting lineup last year. They had a plethora of bigs. They had Daniel Tice. They had Mason Plumley. They had Zubach. And they could they could go to all these different different versatile matchups against the Celtics. Remember last year the Celtics were absolutely blown out by the Clippers at the mm. Garden, and that same sense wasn't exactly there tonight. And this was a good game for Kristaps Porzingis to come back because the rotation, the matchups the Clippers had to throw at the Celtics didn't exactly match up with what we had in Kristaps Porzingis and Kada out there. And Kristaps Porzingis, he started out, he played about six and a half minutes. Came out of the game. Kata played the next ten and a half minutes, and then Kristaps Porzingis played of six and a half minutes again in the second quarter, and then he rounded out. He started the third quarter, played about seven and a half minutes, came back for about two minutes in the fourth quarter, and again, that's another aspect of why this was a great return for Kristaps Porzingis and the perfect opportunity for Joe Missoula and the Celtics to throw him out there because we blew out the Clippers. And he didn't have to go in there in the fourth quarter, and we didn't have to play him a couple extra minutes. He was playing in about you know six, seven minute stints. That's where they wanted him at tonight. And in the fourth quarter, we didn't have to play him at all. We were up by almost well, we weren't up by thirty when he came out of the game, but we eventually went back up by thirty. We were up by twenty plus at the point in which he came out of the game, and we didn't have to rely on his presence at the end of the game to go and pull the game out. So that was another aspect of why it was great to have Kristaps Porzingis back. And I thought tonight, too, they didn't force him into a lot of plays. A lot of plays came to him naturally. He saw six shots from two, six shots from three. He wasn't exactly banging in the post. And a lot of those shots from two were just lobs to Porzingis on wide open cuts to the rim or wide open rolls to the rim. So Kristaps Porzingis coming back, this was the game. This was a, this was a nice little starter for him going forward. Now, I wonder how much he's going to play if they're going to manage him in the future. If the, We do have three days rest between now and the cup game on Friday against the Chicago Bulls. So, And that's another reason, too. You, if you play him tonight, you didn't play him yesterday against mm. a team that has a plethora of bigs in the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves last night or the last afternoon. Now you have three days rest coming off of this game where he actually gets his feet under him against a team that really can't match up with him in the Celtics. Now you have three days rest. Now the cup game comes up, and now you can really start to insert and integrate Kristaps Porzingis into the lineup. So, of course, we talked about Porzingis. We're probably going to talk about him even more so, but I stand on the statement of this was really the perfect opportunity for him to come back despite it being eh, maybe a little early from what the, the initial timeline was. So would you say, Seamus, last night it was very surprising that Namish Keita had a coach's decision uh, a healthy scratch because this is a guy who, yes, he has been struggling the past couple games. This is a guy who's been starting in the starting lineup uh, in the past few weeks for Chris Josh Porzingis and when Al Horford uh, misses games as well. Were you? Do you think that this was kind of planned a little bit? You saw no Nimi last night and CKP tonight uh, or last night, and you think they played those two tonight and then rested Al Horford uh, uh, for tonight. Do you think that that's what happened or do you think it was strictly matchup based why Nimi didn't get the go last night and Tillman did? I think there was certainly some planning within that because if you look at who played last night, Tillman and right. Horford, they're the more experienced bigs. Now, of course, outside of Porzingis, they have the same amount of experience, but Kata, if you're going up against Gobert, if you're going up, up against Nas Reed, if you have Julius Randle, who likes to go in the low post as well, he would be battling with Kata if he were to be out there. Kata, for as great as he's been in portions of the season relative to what his expectations are, there have been a couple of moments where we look at him and go, all right, uh, maybe not the best option right here. He's not the most sound player in every single area. And I think last night or last afternoon, rather, uh, yesterday, I don't believe that he would have been the best matchup to throw at Gobert, Nas Reed, and Julius Randle, those three experienced bigs. And that's why we saw Tillman and Horford yesterday and tonight, like I mentioned, only Zubac out there. I believe you can go out there and actually play him against Zubac because Zubac has been having quite a season up to this mm. point. And you do want Kata to all... form those repetitions over time and, and have him be a part of the rotation in some sense because I believe as time moves on, when Kristaps Porzingis comes back into the lineup, <laughs> as we move later on in the season, we still have Tillman, we still have Horford, specifically Horford. He's, of course, an older gentleman. 
We want to manage his minutes. We want to manage Al Horford's minutes going forward. And I think we're going to see more of them later in the season. And Keita, he's probably going to take a little bit of a back seat in the rotation, especially considering we have Cornette as well. Mm -hmm. So these early season reps for Keita against big guys who, yes, they're, they're quality. You have Zubac and a quality big, but after him, there really isn't much the Clippers have to play. And you do want him to form those reps over time and hopefully have him as an option later on down the line when, hey, maybe we do want to play Horford here, here, and there, but we don't want to play Horford on a second night of a back-to-back, or we want to limit his minutes here, but we still want to play well. We want to be able to insert Kata into those moments, and he's had those good moments this year, but it, at times, Kata isn't exactly the most sound big on yeah. the floor, and if the Celtics are really going to want to win consistently and grab that number one seed, because I, I think it's safe to say the number one seed, it won't be as easy as attaining it last year. We haven't held the number one seed in almost a month now over the Cavaliers and there are other teams challenging us as well. If the Celtics want to attain that home court advantage throughout the playoffs and really play well later into the season, into the playoffs, they're going to want to have their top bigs, Porzingis, Horford, Tillman, Cornette, and then Kata out there. And if Kata has to play, you do want him to have these repetitions from early season in his head and in that experience. So I do think it was a little plan between these two nights for sure. I think if you look at the personnel on the floor and who really played, I think the Celtics had this all mapped out, specifically Joe Missoula. Mm. B, what would you like from KP tonight? Um, This is going to sound wicked strange, but just hear me out on this one. I would not play him over 20 minutes at this stage right now, especially if we were blindsided by this early comeback. But don't get me wrong, though. Listen, if he can play, like I just said this, I said this like earlier back in the in the show. If he just plays that consistent, like I don't have a problem with it, though. But like I think what I was saying in the group chat earlier was too. It's like when you know tonight matchup wise against Zubox, one of the best rebounders in the league. Fine, play him against that. I have no problem with that. But you know, if we're kind of having like this little bit of a blowout, but like you need him for you know, if we kind of say if God forbid we were to blow it, like that's fine. But like, I think if we're just like kind of, you know, having fun out there, it's like, don't because what's like, what's going to happen so if like, you know, were you shocked we when in that fourth quarter? Yeah, exactly. It's like we were just kind of like um giving up a lot of alley oops in the fourth quarter. We were doing the same thing. It's just like, yeah, like don't intend to like push them out there for like, don't throw them out there for like plays you don't need them for. That's just my mm. opinion. But for me, with Kristaps Porzingis, he, in Jason Tatum's words, is an absolute cheat code. He is a cheat code. The Celtics are one of the best teams in the league, if not the best team in the league, without Kristaps Porzingis. You add Kristaps Porzingis back into that lineup, you're going to see a lot of outcomes like this. A lot of outcomes like this gets a lot of really solid teams. Um, he didn't. He had mentioned it in the in the opener. Didn't even look like he skipped a beat. There was no, there was no favoring that foot. There was no limping. There was no lack of aggression with Chris Saps Porzingis. He was deflecting shots. He was a uh, he was protecting the rim. Uh, there was this one this one play. I believe it was late in the third quarter where he jab step blew by Zubak and and slammed it home. Uh, that that to me, like he just he looks healthy, he looks comfortable, and I think over time you will see his minutes progress. I I, I can see what you're uh, insinuating. Um, be on the on the minutes thing and playing over twenty minutes. Um, a little bit surprised see KP go go in that starting lineup and and play nearly twenty three minutes tonight, but also uh, he just looked really 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 sharp and. He, Reminded me a little bit of that game one against Dallas, although he wasn't knocking down three after three, just the intensity and, the, and it definitely right. lived up to the hype, right? Like I feel like when players return and it's, it's this big hype and everything like that. And then they just kind of come out and they, they look like they're returning from injury. KP didn't look like he returned from injury uh, tonight. And I think that's very important. And the Celtics came out with a huge win. 